Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Championship Leadership. We got Luke Dupron here from San Diego, California, and I uh, appreciate you being here, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, man. Thank you for uh, having me on. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we, uh, we, um, we're, you know, I, I was just on his, and so he's returning the favor, coming on my show. And uh, I always like to kick off our conversation on this podcast with this question. Championship Leadership is the name of the podcast. What, what comes to mind for you when you hear Championship Leadership? Um, so the word, honestly, that, that jumped right out for me was consistency. Um, okay. So when yeah. I think of like championship level, um, world class, the elite, uh, it's about being consistent. And I think as a leader, whether you're leading yourself through life, you're leading your loved ones, your clients, a team, um, I think a lot of people can do it when things are right. But to be consistent um, in how you show up and how you put people in a position to succeed when things aren't going right uh, comes down to a simple word of consistency. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. That's, uh, yeah, so true. I mean, th I think that's what keeps, you know, I'll go, I'll, I go to football a lot and Bill Belichick and Nick Saban. And, and, uh, I think that's the, you know, they continue to get there consistently. Number one, uh, almost every year to the, which is, you know, no one else has ever really been able to match. Right. So, I mean, they are championship leaders, no doubt. And uh, it's uh, no doubt back to that kind of micro level of they're just, they're obviously doing some things consistently, consistently day over day, time after time that continues to, to be the right formula. And I think part of it is, is uh, a lot of people, they get bored with consistency, right? Yep. You ever 100%. run into that with what you do? Uh, absolutely. And it's funny that you mentioned Bill Belichick and the Patriots, because um, one thing that's, that's something that comes to mind is, you know, you'll see athletes that don't necessarily love it there um, yeah. because it is, you know, regimented and you just kind of plug into the system and you're a little bit more of a cog than a, than a personality there. Um, yeah. But they produce right. results over and over and over with, you know, again, plug and play people, which is incredible at the highest level of sport to be able to do that is just, you know, it's mind boggling to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to answer, to answer your question in my, in my world of, as far as a coach, absolutely. Uh, getting people to be consistent or deal with, I want to say like boredom in a way, um, that's absolutely a barrier. But once you kind of overcome the idea that it can be the path of least resistance from a time commitment standpoint, when we're talking health and fitness, um, people kind of get on board because if you want efficiency, sometimes efficiency is going to be a little bit uh, boring because you're going to get consistent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, boredom or like the mundane, right? The mundane tasks. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's uh, what tell, tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself and kind of a little bit of your story and the path that you've been on and, and what it is uh, that you do today. Sure. Um, so I'm an online uh, health and fitness coach. I work primarily with men. Um, my background, like many, you know, people in this industry started through sport at a young age, uh, moved to San Diego, eventually ended up working in a uh, rehab studio where I ended up doing some corrective exercise um, and actually, I was led there through an injury, um, a, a quite traumatic uh, back injury. Um, from there, kind of have transitioned more into like the lifestyle side of things, helping guys kind of turn back the clock, lose weight, have more energy, um, have more confidence that comes with kind of stepping in all things that I know you know through, through your journey um, yeah. by stepping into a consistent lifestyle of, of health and fitness. So it's really helping people optimize that process to where they can um, not have their life completely consumed by this idea of being in shape. And understand it's more of a, uh, it's a, it's a pre-requirement <laughs> for getting through life. So um, today that exists again, more like in an online format um, with, with coaching. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And um, you're from the Midwest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Illinois border of Iowa. I say Illinois and everybody goes dr directly to Chicago and I go, no, 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 yeah. I'm way more hillbilly than that. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to gotta think Iowa. So I'm on the yeah. border of Illinois and Iowa and, you know, yeah, picked the quad up quad cities, right? Quad cities. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so picked up and just moved out to uh, San Diego kind of on a whim, um, had a kinesiology degree. Uh, and I, I grew up in a bike shop. My dad owns a, a pedal bike shop. So I was able yeah. to move out with a, a job in San Diego, you know, where I'm going to get paid $14 an hour, you know, <laughs> where, where rent is two grand a month. Right. And, uh, you know, and then I ended up using my degree and getting into some personal training, which again, then led to the, the rehab yeah. studio. And then eventually obviously do my own thing. So. When you also on a TV show, correct? TV, yeah, a TV star uh, in, <laughs> in, in our uh, 
presence here. Tell us a little bit about that too, because that's very interesting. Yeah, yes, particularly for I know with what you do with some of the physical challenges. And um, yeah. as I mentioned on on when I had you on my show, I haven't really shared a ton of it on my podcast, um, and it's not because it doesn't fit; it does, but for a very specific um, reason. Um, so yeah, I had an opportunity to be on a show called The Selection, which was um, basically a mock uh, special forces uh, training. And so, mm-hmm. long story short, we're just turned over to you know, six or seven special forces and they're just going to break us down. And, and, uh, so, you know, my, my desire to do this came from the understanding that there is growth from challenging circumstances, regardless of what they be. And they don't have to necessarily be physical. The physical is just a really good tool to kind of find the weak links in, in how you're, um, going through life. And, uh, for, again, I, I always put this little asterisk for anybody who's, you know, hearing these things and, and, you know, when you hear it's like, oh, we got gassed and, you know, we're in the water at, you know, 10 o'clock at night and carrying <laughs> logs up mountains and, um, yeah. you know, being, you know, you know, zero sleep. And it's not something that you have to do to get in shape. In fact, I would urge people not necessarily to do that. Um, so this is more of a mental thing um, mm-hmm. as, as, it, as it definitely was. Um, obviously, well, it's, inc- it's incredibly physical, of course, Yeah, yeah but yeah. the values of it are, are going to be the mental side. So I don't want people to think that, oh, you need to go do all these like super intense, crazy things if you want to lose weight, get fit, um, show up better as a father, parent, you know, uh, hus- uh, husband, wife, whatever. Um, yeah. But it does give you a really good uh, chance to kind of see some fail points in your thinking, which I was able to find. Yeah. Yeah. You, like you said, yeah. I mean, it's definitely physical, but I think it really, at, at a certain point, you just realize that your body will keep going if you, if you really mm-hmm. want it to. And, and then it is, it's just like the majority of it being mental. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And I think, like I said, where, whether it's, <laughs> uh, it doesn't necessarily have to always be physical. It's just a great, the physical is just a great conduit to like find that limit of, of what you're yeah. thinking is possible. Um, and there's no question in this scenario, like physically it's like I did and was pushed further. And by the way, I didn't make it through this. I pulled the plug, I quit. Um, mm-hmm. But there was still tremendous value in the, the time that I was there um, from both obviously like the physical stress um, going beyond what would have normally, if this would have been an alone workout, there's no way I'm going to push to this capacity. Having some, some team um, situation was really, yeah. Um, interesting and useful to be around as well. Yeah. And well, I mean, there was only, is it, was there only one that finished? Was there someone? I think, uh, no, there was like four or five guys. Yeah. So the whole thing lasted, I think the guys that finished lasted nine days. Okay. Um, so I pulled the plug on like day three. Yeah. Um, I think the first person pulled the plug, I think about an hour in and everybody an was hour? pretty fit. Yeah. This, this was, I would say the only person that, you know, when we tested in was um, not quite physically, conditioned enough um, everybody hour. else wow hour, yeah i mean it's you know it's just a hard physical just breaking down of an hour of course yeah. um and 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 actually just lacking a little bit of a physical baseline where you know uh-huh. for the most part there's a lot of athletes there was some endurance um professionals uh like spartan winners yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know people that had done a lot of this kind of stuff before yeah. um yeah, but I think by like the first day, like ten or twelve were maybe done. I don't, I, I can't quite remember. It's sure. all kind of, it's all kind of a blur. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That was a few years ago, right? Yeah, this is yeah, this is about three years ago. And yeah. I, I mentioned I have uh, Sean Haggerty. He's in a uh, come on my show. We're gonna yeah we're gonna chat about it. He was one of the one of the SEAL instructors. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's awesome. I can't wait to check that one out. Yeah, and it's it's uh, you know, I always like sharing this in context. I've also <laughs> had a, uh, I have a friend who's a a former Navy SEAL, and I believe he was a SEAL instructor as well, and I actually met him in an acting class. And in an acting class, we had to get up, sing a cappella, no music. And there's like real people in this, this that yeah. sing and perform, like actual performers, right? Like I didn't just <laughs> hear growing acapella. up. You have to sing a cappella. We can, we can pick our song. And here's, you know, this badass, like, you know, you physically, there's nothing you could do to this guy. Yeah. And afterwards he goes, dude, I almost left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and, and, yeah. And, and so this is what I'm sharing when I, when I say is like, it doesn't have to be, there's, there's other ways I think that you can stress yourself to find again, you know, weaknesses in our thinking. The physical is just a really good tool, an easy one. Great. That's really Probably accessible. One of the best. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I agree. <laughs> and um, you know, it's to that point, you're talking about the seal that almost left because uh, he had to sing acapella in front of some people as uh it was one of Joe Rogan's recent podcasts I was just listening to today. 
Uh, I think it was, uh, gosh, what's his name? Last name's Barnett. He was a UFC fighter. Oh, yeah, Josh Barnett. Josh, yeah. yeah. And and Josh just said that. He's like, uh, he was talking about how he's got all this material to be a comedian. Obviously, Joe Rogan's a comedian. And yeah. He's like, but I just haven't been able to get the nerve to go do it. And he's Joe's like <laughs> laughing at him, like, what do you mean? Like you're a killer in the ring in front totally. of millions and you can't get up and tell a few jokes. And it's like kind of that same same yeah. uh mentality, yeah. right? Yeah, and it's just and I think again, I think there's tremendous growth there just from the fact that like, hey, this is a this is a fearful situation. Um, I recognize there's nothing really can happen. Obviously, again, yeah. like, you know, doing um doing extreme physical things there, there are some risk i know and yeah. you know the, the the one of the events that you did like i mean a gentleman passed away right like, yeah there's yeah. there's real cost to certain things um and this is actually where i tell people like you gotta be careful and this is why i do like rucking and hiking to get a good physical stress um i come from a corrective exercise background so i see the problem with bad exercise a lot sure I see, like the long-term effects of that and seeing guys that are having to get surgeries and i mean in fact myself i don't have an acl and, and jiu-jitsu <laughs> and M- mma and i'm still doing yeah. certain things yeah. um so i definitely have a health first fitness second approach mm-hmm. um which definitely affects my decision making on things yeah. um but rucking and meaning like throwing some weight in a pack and just going and hitting a hill repetitively like that's an easy tool that you can go find again that that point where you're that point of struggle where you want to quit and then decide you're yeah. going to go a little bit further and yeah. it's a pretty safe one where there's not going to be like a lot of joint degeneration that's yeah. going to happen um but again like it could be something for like that josh barnett like mentally one of the toughest guys you could ever imagine he gets in a cage has fist fights for a living in front of you yeah. know, tens of thousands of people but the idea of getting up on a stage and telling a joke and, and hearing <laughs> exactly. crickets is terrifying him so yeah, clearly where does he need to lean into yeah yeah that side yeah of it? yeah yeah. And then, uh, yeah, just to go back to like rocking and, uh, I love Rocky, man. I just, uh, well, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I, I enjoy it, but it, it also sucks. Right. But that's okay. That's the point. Um, <laughs> and then today, uh, I, I was pulling a tire. Uh, my, I have a coach. She's a, she's like a crazy ultra running, uh, champion coach. And now she, she trains a bunch of, uh, people and I happen to be lucky enough to be one of those and, and she's got me pulling this tire around and I'm like so oh you actually want me to go out on the road with this thing and she's like <laughs> oh yeah she's gonna you're gonna get a lot of crazy looks uh, but actually people will kind of be jealous and sure enough like cars are passing me and here I am just like tugging this tire behind me on the road on the blacktop <laughs> on the gravel and one guy passed walking by and he's just kind of he was intrigued but uh, very similar to rucking right like just pulling a load and mm-hmm. And doing some things that are a little unorthodox, but, but, uh, but, you know, very beneficial and, and the risk I think is pretty low as far yeah. as like, yeah, there's hundred percent. Like there's one where you can just, again, you're going to find that wall where you're like, this is tough. And then, but yeah. you're not breaking down the system. Yeah. Um, right. So yeah, I dig that. That's fun. What, who are some of the championship leaders that have impacted you and, and more so like what, what, what are some of the characteristics that really stand out um, that maybe you've helped model who you are as a leader? Um, you know, when I think of the in-person people that have really impacted my life, um, I, I have to obviously speak about Sean Robeck, who is the um, doctor of chiropractic that um, I got to work with for about three or four years, still, still keep in touch with to this day. Um, Where's he at so he's San Diego based, just opened up a practice in Scottsdale. So shout out to Sean. Um, okay. So someone I still consider friend and mentor. Um, so, you know, I, I have a, a tremendous respect for him professionally, obviously as a chiropractor and what he does, but also again, as, the, as a man and a leader, I've watched him um, go through the struggle of building businesses. And mm-hmm. we're talking in-person um, clinics uh, yeah. in, in multi-states. So to watch him kind of trudge through that um, with a very even keel, consistent, uh, uh, work ethic has been mm-hmm. tremendous. Um, and then if I were going to like the guru land, um, someone yeah. who really resonates with me is, uh, Tom Bilyeu. So of impact okay. theory. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of his, his frameworks of thinking, I think are tremendous. Um, you know, the, uh, I think one of the, the basic ones is the, the work is guaranteed, but the success isn't. And I'm, I'm butchering that, but <laughs> he's somebody who, uh, I think if you're looking for, you know, the soundbite clip guys, you know, the Gary V's, um, Tom Bilyeu's someone who, you know, with the growth mindset focus is is bringing a lot of good stuff to the world. Yeah, absolutely. Billionaire Tom Bilyeu, right? Like didn't he sell yeah. his company for a billion dollars? Yeah. And you know, and this is something too that I think about when you're, when you're thinking about modeling somebody, like I'm aware 
I don't want to be Tom Bilyeu. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you listen to like, I, I don't have kids, I actually don't intend on having kids, but he's made mm -hmm. it very clear, like the way he operates, like he wouldn't be able to. Sure. So I do think we got to be careful. Like, who are we, <laughs> who are yeah. we looking at? And like, is that, but I think you can take the lessons and there's always, um, certain, yeah, certain you can values. take pieces of it. Right. Yeah, totally. And him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got a, a brilliant outlook on, on many things, um, particularly again on the mindset stuff. Yeah. What's, um, what's, what's the big vision impact for you that you want to make? I think championship leaders that have that great vision and courage to take uh, action on it. What, what do you want to do? What's the impact you want to make it here in the near future? Um, it's really just expanding for men. Or, and I say men from a marketing standpoint, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. But, but really this all rings true for women as well. There is so much, I, I might rant here, but like there is so much misinformation when it comes to being healthy and fit. Um, and unfortunately I think it is it's so impactful in so many areas of our life. Again, if you don't have like a base level of health and fitness, I'm not talking the extreme stuff that, that we were talking. Again, mm -hmm. that's its own, to me, that's its own value add over here. But if you don't have a baseline, like I'm talking about you when you were, you were up to 275 pounds, right? But this is before yeah. you kind of got yeah. in shape. I'm you're aware, you're, yeah. Yeah, you're on the low. And like, <laughs> yeah. you're not showing up fully, period. Right, totally. Period, right? Like yep. husband, father, owner of businesses, whatever. Even if you're crushing it and- what I would like to hopefully bring to the world and what I try to do with my clients is you don't like, it is your God given right as a human animal to be a healthy and fit person. And there are strategies, tactics, and way of ways of existing in this world that do not consume all of your time that do not take away from being a business owner or being a parent. They're going to level it up. And it's, I think, my mission and goal is to help people kind of realize that to where it's like, this is something that everybody can have access to. This doesn't mean everybody needs to go, you know, run the hundred mile race or do a selection show, but everybody should have access and the ability and the capacity to be healthy, to feel good, um, to have a good physique and uh, have energy, yeah. confidence, everything that comes with, I think just being a healthy, normal fit person. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love that. Where, where does that come from? What, what, What's driving you to make, to work with these men and, and to make that difference? Um, you know, it's, that's, that's a great question. Um, I guess it's just from seeing the result with people. So most people are going to come and maybe want to work together because it's like, Hey, I need to lose 20 or 30 pounds. And that's exciting. And um, yeah. I, we're going to get that goal, right. but that's the, uh, that's the conscious top layer goal. What's really exciting to me is, the next step down. So like take Jeff, a guy I'm working with who had already had some, some, some success losing weight and he's getting into cycling, but now it's like the dude's racing, um, uh, electric mountain bikes at 50 really? years old. Right. Yeah. Like he's got a race, you know, like we just finished up a race and now we're kind of like electric like, mountain bikes. Yeah. So like it has an electric assist. This is not like, yeah, yeah. you're not, you're not, on a, awesome. you're, you're not on a motorbike, but it does give right. you, um, so these are still hour long races where like, you're going to be smoked afterwards. Yeah. For sure. Um, so it's more about expanding, uh, again, what people think they're capable of, because if you're somebody who's unhealthy and possibly overweight, you're not active, you have no idea what you're missing from how you feel. Yeah. And again, I know everybody shows up with like, Hey, I want to look better. And I get that, but it's, you know, it's, it's my buddy, Josh, who, you know, he, he was obese his whole, his whole life. And then I, you know, have him on my podcast and to listen to him talk about how he's shown up for his one-year-old after losing 200 pounds. It's like, that's life-changing stuff. Um, so it really, to me, is seeing the impact that it has on how people feel um, is, is really the, the, the driving excitement for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. Totally. That's very similar for me. What, uh, what's that, that fork in the road moment for you, that, that turning point, critical, critical moment where had you made a different decision, you could be somewhere very different in life? Um, I think there's a lot of people in that moment today and it's just powerful to hear others experiences and and uh you know hadn't had you not made that decision yeah like i said you, you just be you could you would be you know somewhere very different in your in your world yeah um i'll go with actually um an injury so yeah. um some bad some bad exercise strategy in fact <laughs> so uh i was back squatting and i compressed a disc in my back and this is probably so this is probably eight or nine years ago um, I don't even know how long I've been in California anymore. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I'd compress a disc in my back, back squatting, literally standing with the bar, just took a little bit of a breath, felt myself feel like I got about two inches shorter. And I thought that's not good. Oh, wow. By the time I've racked the bar, I get in the car and go home. I can barely get out. I had a guy run up to me. He thought I got shot. Um, by the way, I'm like limping. So did about, you actually squat the weight or did you just, no, right no, I just racked it. Like yeah. I was like, that didn't feel right. It was yeah, just, yeah. I had the bar a little yeah. hot. I took my breath off and I felt myself get shorter. Like I wow. felt and like, you want to talk That's about a crazy. gross, a gross sensation. I've broke stuff. You know, I have like a, yeah. I just still have a finger that subluxates constantly when I do jujitsu. I've a torn ACL from do, training MMA. Like I, I've dealt with some injuries. Yeah. That one was a gross feeling. Um, and so yeah. that is actually what, you know, like six days later where I'm like, I can't move. And I'm, I literally couldn't, I mean, I couldn't roll over. So I actually, um, I called Sean, the, the, the Cairo that I ended up working with. And, yeah. uh, I reached out to him cause he had treated me for some elbow stuff before when I was um, doing a jujitsu tournament. And I really appreciated his, uh, his demeanor because he's like, well, you're an idiot. Cause you're still training. You're still going to compete in this tournament. <laughs> so this is not the right time to do treatment, which if yeah. you worked with different chiropractors, many would just say, come on in. I'm going to treat you three times a week and we'll, we'll solve this. So yeah. I knew he was an honest person, um, honest, uh, practitioner. So I called him and just was like, I need somebody to tell me like, Hey dude, you're about to never walk again. You need to get into like a real hospital. And so he assessed me long story short, that did lead to, um, working together for about three or four years to where instead of just being a dumb personal trainer, um, with a kinesiology degree, I got to yeah. work with some high level Olympic level athletes. I got to kind of be a pretend physical therapist. My eye for biomechanics completely changed to where the level of detail that I can bring to, um, to somebody in the, in the way I can help them completely change. And along with him and other, um, you know, I'll mention Jonathan Pierce and Sam Wag, other, other practitioners, doctors, um, that now are part of my network. Um, if I need to refer to, and, and just a level of competence that I get to be around at a normal quote unquote fitness in person in the industry would never have gotten access to. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that moment for you was, was what working with him? Uh, yeah, just shifting, shifting into this industry. And like, it was a level of again, yeah. mentorship that was better than the, than a, uh, degree. Right. Yeah, yeah. And if I wouldn't have got yeah. hurt, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. have actually had access to, um, again, yeah, the, is that crazy? Right. Yeah. And yeah, so the, the worst moment for me really is, and I think this is true for a lot of us, right? Like a lot of the more challenging times, like hopefully you can pull some, something from it. And I was able to pull, um, some, some world-class, uh, mentorship from it, which is completely yeah. shifted well, how I, how I approach fitness at this point. I mean, if you're open to it, I think this is powerful to emphasize and for, for listeners to take away is, you know, in those worst quote unquote worst moments of our life or really tough, difficult moments, there are always gifts if we're able to, if we're willing to be able to open to see them. And, and, uh, and that's one of those, I think, yeah, for you. Totally. And that's a challenge, Absolutely. right? That's, that's hard to be yeah, in the mental space to look at, you yeah. know, what's the, what's the good, but man, if you can, if you can step back from a moment and, uh, try to find that. It's like, it also gives you the juice to move through it. Right. What's, um, what's, what's one of your biggest takeaways? Again, we talked about selection a bit and what, what was a, a major lesson that you hold on to from that experience? Oh uh, man, I have, I have quite a few. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the big one, um, comes from actually quitting, um, which, mm -hmm you know, we talked about the other day a little bit. So there's a level of regret there, of course, right? As sure. you do, if you quit anything challenging, um, particularly when I watched the, the trailer of it and they got to jump out of a helicopter in the ocean yeah. and have to swim <laughs> in. And I thought, Oh my God, what I, you know, yeah. um, and, and recognizing later that that's not going to be a replicable. There's other, like, um, there's other challenges that you can sign up for, but this one yeah. uniquely in, in retrospect, because it had, um, production behind it right yeah. like the the history channel um even though yeah. there was no like there's no cut or like we were really just turned over them but there yeah. were some things that we, we that i would have gotten to do had i stuck around yeah. um but the the lesson in even pulling the plug was and this is again why i do think it's important to do stressful situations whether again it's like josh barnett going and doing stand-up yeah. is it highlights where you have an air in thinking and decision making and so for me it's like the platitude of hey, stay, um, stay present, right? Like we all know that, like we've heard yeah, that, right? but I failed to do it under a stressful situation. And that was beautiful yeah. because it highlighted it for me. Yeah. Meaning when I quit, I made the decision from a past mm -hmm. and future. I yeah. was 
thinking about a past injury that was rearing its head and it's something I've yeah. dealt with many times and I'm going down. I know where this is going in the future and how it's yeah. going to affect me. Yeah. And, and truthfully, like, in, you know, in a non-ego standpoint, it might have been the right decision. But regardless, right. I got the value out of it to where it's yeah. like, hey, if I would have stayed present, what did happen that day that I, that I pulled the plug, things kind of shifted gears. They had like kind of broke everybody for about three days and mm -hmm. then it shifted gears into some more um, like tactical, like martial arts training, which I have a little bit of a background in. So I probably would have been okay. And yeah. then they actually ended up going into a uh, experience where if they got caught after they had to dig and do this high, they got stuffed in a, like a box for like eight hours, yeah. which by the way, I would have pulled the plug on there mentally as well at that moment. Would you have? Life. Yeah. A hundred percent. I can tell you why here. It's, it's actually, this was the other kind of big lesson. This is interesting. Cause I was, I was thinking about this this morning as I'm pulling a tire. And so I, I, I love to hear what you got to say. In that. Well, yeah. So, so the, so by, by stepping away again, this was like a hyper situation to recognize, holy shit, dude, like you made the decision not by staying present. If I would have said like, Hey, we're good now, maybe this is going to shift gears, but I just couldn't wrap my head around that in that moment. Um, where, where I, if I would have stuck around and say made it and, and, and granted, we probably would have done 6 million pushups and all the stuff that they don't show that For maybe sure. would have, I, yeah. I would have struggled with. Um, but when they shifted gears to, um, these boxes and, and to explain what, what happened for these guys that were still there and gals, um, they basically went and did like a hide where they had to like dig a hole and hide. And if they got caught, like the instructors told them like, you do not want us to find you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they bring them down, blindfold them. I think, I think they might've zip tied them hands and, and they basically stuffed them in um, small boxes. And I know, um, you know, uh, actual special forces guys go through something much more. Yeah, serious school. I have, I, yeah, I have yeah. friends that are on, on teams. Um, so I think they were in and out of boxes for about eight hours. Um, I think blindfolded with, I believe they had like crying babies playing super loud. Um, this would have been an extreme challenge for me. But yeah. again, I think there could have been value. And here's why, here's why I recognize it. I remember the first day we got told to basically, we had to go into the barracks and just lay down. And I assume this is because they were setting up for another evolution. Uh -huh. And I cannot tell you how hyper aware, like this should have been the, this was the greatest gift we got, right? We're laying yeah. there. People are falling, people are sleeping. Cause you know, you're all, all the night before, like yeah. hopefully you're taking a nap. I was so hyper aware that somebody was telling me that I had to be on that cot. It was the oh, craziest really? thing where I'm like, I want, I want to get up. All, I, I, it, validated, <laughs> it, it made no sense. It, like I said, this should be, this is like, it validated so much to me that, you know, as a, somebody who's, uh, self-employed and I really do value freedom. It was the most like clear <laughs> distinction yeah. of, of what one of my core values is, which is like personal freedom. Yeah. So I can't imagine if I got that reaction where I'm laying on this cot, basically getting to take a nap, if you would have stuffed me in a box. Um, but again, I think it could have even anchored that a little bit. And it, yeah. even that moment truly has helped me recognize when things are getting tough in business, I'm doing all this thing. And it's like, it really has helped solidify like, no, like this is, that is a, is a core value and um, hat tip to, to you. Cause I know you, you were a service member. This is something that I have so much respect for anybody that was in the military because I get that. Like everybody thinks the worst case scenario of like, you know, you, you give your life up in service, which, yeah. and that's like the ultimate sacrifice. But man, the other one is you are sacrificing your daily control, your mm -hmm. weekly, your monthly control yeah. to where you don't, you know, like, I mean, I don't want to say like the government's running your life, but that is a, a massive, massive Definitely. one that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, for anybody in any yeah. branch of service, uh, that, Ooh, that would be, that would be tough. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, it's interesting to hear that. You know, I was thinking about it today. I was, I don't know why, but I, I came to those boxes. Mm -hmm. I was like, I think I would have done all right there. I mean, you never know, right. You just, you don't know. And, and, uh, of course they're playing games with you and they get the, the they're doing everything they can to make it the worst experience for you, but I'm yeah, not a claustrophobic and guy and I would have attempted kind of like what you said to, to use that time as a, a rest period as, as much, if you can, if there was a way to somehow block out the crying babies and I'm sure yeah. the heat and probably the difficulty in breathing and yeah, and they're spraying, they were spraying, they were spraying everybody with uh, yeah, I think yeah. cold water and, um, you know, you're probably in there pissing yourself. And <laughs> of course, yeah, uh, right. 
you know, I have, it's funny. I have a friend who is on a, on a team right now. And, you know, we talked about, he's like, Oh yeah, the boxes are like, that's, that's, we do it for like 19 hours. That's just like a great rest for me. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, I, it would have mentally shut me down because <laughs> I, would, I, I would have been so aware that somebody else is controlling yeah. Where, yeah, what yeah. I'm doing, which uh, again, strange, strange revelation, but a brilliant one that maybe I wouldn't have, have recognized. And, you know, I've had guys yeah, on my podcast who did a, uh, had a guy who did a seven day darkness retreat um where he's basically locked in a room for seven days in the dark oh, wow. alone yeah. and uh same thing right like it's a, a it's a horribly challenging experience but the the lessons that he was able to pull away from that level of intensity were at this point you know life-changing for him so yeah i don't i don't know if it was talking on your podcast but it was on one recently and it's just like finding those for, you know, like the darkness retreat. I mean, you know, I like, to, I like to grow and find a lot of growth through the physicality of things, but there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. Right. I've heard of the silent, the silent kind of meditation retreats or the silent mm -hmm. retreats where you don't talk for three days, 10 days, whatever it might be. But the dark one, that's, that's, that's got me intrigued too. That would be a mental oh, shift for sure. Yeah. You're, you're literally, a, you could do it with a partner. There was like different degrees of it. You could okay. do it where they bring in like a therapist and you do some talk, like you do actually wow. some work. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, so I think there's, like I said, the, the, the physical, I think is just one tool for yeah. this growth. I think it's a brilliant one because for me mm -hmm. to, to, to use my body to get into my mind is the easiest way. But I think there's, again, there's other ones like, like yeah. we spoke about. It's like for somebody, it could be a, having a conversation right? Like yeah. having a conversation that you know you need to have might be one yeah. of the hardest things you have to do. And it's like, well, if you just yeah. approach it, like I'm going to do this because it's hard. That's a great place to come from, I think. Right. Totally. Um, well, I know I want to respect your time here and, and uh, time's kind of flown here as we've been going, but what are one or two uh, things that you could share with the listeners as we do wrap up here that, you know, if they were to implement it into their life today would help them move their life forward today? Um, yeah. So, you know, this is going to feel big when I say it this way, but it's like, you do have to take ownership um, of your health and your fitness. I mean, this is like a, a, a key pillar in your life and your existence. It's the lowest piece, I think of the, uh, the pyramid. And mm -hmm. as far as implementing that, that that's a, a much bigger answer that I probably yeah. won't get in here, but I will leave it with this. All the extreme stuff that we're talking about, like that's fantastic. And again, it's for your mind. But as far as approaching your health and your fitness from like a longevity point, understand that like less can be more. This is something that can fit into your life. It is, um, I always tell people, it is less work than people think and the results are way greater than they imagine. And there's really just two things that we have to figure out what's holding you back. Is it the internal side or is it an external resource issue? Both are sol solvable. So I'm going to give you a real easy example. It's like, I don't have time to cook. I always eat healthy. Great. There's a bazillion meal services that would yeah. just, you could just right. pop open that you actually love to eat. It tastes so good. Like yeah. there's so many easy little things that you can implement to move you forward in it. But I would really urge everybody that if you don't have a health and fitness practice, you're going to be kind of forced into one, but you could, from a place of rehab, things are going to get yeah. to the point like yourself where you're 275 pounds, you realize you're not showing up and now it's a tough place to move forward on from, or you can yeah. do, do it from a place of prehab where you're just looking to elevate where you're already at. So, um, yeah, 100%. I, you know, if obviously anybody needs help in that department, I'm happy to, to talk with them and kind of give them some, some, some more resources beyond what I can say right there in that little wrap up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not a lot of time to dive deep there, but, uh, please do reach out if, if you got questions or need some help. Um, what are a few ways we can follow you and just find out more about what you're up to? Uh, easiest way is livegreatlifestyle.com. Um, that's the podcast name. That's kind of everything on social. But so if you go to livegreatlifestyle.com, um, I'll have some resources up there very shortly with some free recipes. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of stuff on there. Um, yeah, that's the best way. Awesome. I appreciate you taking time today, Luke, man. It's been, it's been awesome. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for coming on my show the other day and enjoy dragging that tire. <laughs> yeah. It was good. It's a good, uh, new, like I said, new toy, and new little challenge. And I have a feeling that Lisa Smith Batchins, my coach, has got more of that in my future. So. Sure. Well, <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for bringing me on. And hopefully uh, today this was helpful for somebody. Yeah, absolutely. It's been great. Awesome.